There are four generations of cephalus born. I'm going to give you a pattern to help you remember which ones are which. It's going to be nice and simple for you. Now, these are also beta-lactam drugs, and they also inhibit cell wall synthesis, okay? But they are less susceptible to penicillinase. That means they cannot be inactivated as easily as the other drugs we talked about. Well, look at the side effects. Well, there's hypersensitivity reaction. I don't care about that. But the next one on the list is very important. It can cause a vitamin K deficiency. And remember, vitamin K is important for clotting factors 10, 9, 7, 2, protein C and S. Vitamin K deficiency, okay, vitamin K is important for clotting factors. Clotting factor 10, 9, 7, 2, protein C, protein S. And remember that anytime you have a clotting factor problem, you bleed into your cavities. If you have a platelet problem, you bleed into your, you bleed from your skin and mucosal surfaces. If you have a clotting factor problem, you bleed into your cavities. Cephalosporins have crossed hypersensitivity with penicillins in 5 to 10% of patients. I don't know if 5 to 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a, that's a lot of people. I'd like to ask you a little vignette saying that which drug is contraindicated when someone is on this drug. Well, that's how they get it from, because in 5 to 10% of patients, okay, cephalosporins and penicillins can react and cross, cross hypersensitivity. In that case, hypersensitivity is important. That's why I'm mentioning it. We talked about amino penicillins earlier. Remember, we said nephrotoxicity gets worse with cephalosporins. Well, here are your cephalosporins. We'll talk about each one specifically in a second. Cephalosporins can also cause disulfram-like reactions with ethanol. And we'll talk about disulfram-like reactions when we do our hematology lecture. So look at this, first generation. We use it to treat PEC, Proteus, E. coli, Klebsiella. And I'm on it straight out of the book. See it? So first generation cephalosporins, we use it to treat PEC. P for Proteus, E. C. for E. coli, K. for Klebsiella. Understand? So the P stands for? Protease. EC for? E K for? Klebsiella. Well, we can know what it's used for, but if we don't know the name of the drug, it's not going to matter. Well, I don't want to memorize the whole drug, cephalozolin and cephalexin. I'm not trying to do that. I'm going to recognize a pattern, I'm going to click, and I'm going to move. You guys can sit there and memorize the whole drug if you want to. I'll be on the next question. Okay? So, Jeremy Lin is a basketball player, drives a Lexus. He's the best basketball player, number one, I say. Drives Lexus, Jeremy Lin drives Lexus. Lin and Lex, first generation. Lin and Lex, Lin and Lex. Lin and? Lex, Lex and? Lin. Lin and? Lex, Lex and? Lin. Lin and? Lex. Excellent. Starts with Seth, has Lin and Lex in it, first generation. Use it to treat peck. Second generation, you treat hen pecks. I don't know why you're pecking hens. I don't know what the hell that means, but that's a mnemonic. It works, so let's leave it. Hen pecks. H for H influenza. E for enterobacter. N for Neisseria. P, Proteus, E, C, E. coli, K, Klebsiella, S, Serratia. There are only four things that are different between first and second generation. Makes sense. Two comes later in the alphabet. Two is a bigger number. This treats more things. Second generation treats more things than first generation. First generation, one word. First generation, one. One word mnemonic, peck. Second generation, two words, hen pecks. Got it? Four things that are different. H, influenza, enterobacter, Neisseria. And Seratia. We're going to review those in a second, so don't worry about it. If you want to make her happy, buy her some fake fox fur. Fake fox fur. See this eight? Right in the middle. Fake fox fur. Right there in the middle. Fake fox fur. I don't care about the whole damn drug name. I don't care to know it. I'm not going to know it. I'm going to memorize it this way. I'm going to see it on my test. I'm going to click and I'm going to move. Or else you guys are going to get confused. Which was first generation? Which was second generation? Which was third generation? Which was fourth generation? Doesn't matter. Second generation cephalosporins have three sounds. Okay, before we get to second generation, this should be the first generation. We said first generation cephalosporins have two sounds. What two sounds? Lin and Lex. Lin and Lex, excellent. Second generation, three sounds. Fake fox fur. Fake fox fur. Say it. Fake fox fur. Go. Fake fox Say fake fox fur. Fake fox Say fake fox fur. Fake fox fur. That's your second generation. We use it to treat hand pecks. You can click and move on the test when you see it. I don't have to sit there and memorize everything. Third generation is too damn easy. The third generation, in the middle, has three letter words that start with T. Try, Taz, and Tax. Can't forget it. You start with the T to remind you, third generation. There's three-letter words right in the middle. Try, taz, and tax. Try, tax, and tax. Try, tax, and tax. Let's do it again. Say it together, everybody. Try, tax, taz. Try, taz, tax. Say it. Try, tax, tax. Say, oh, it's an order. It's try, tax, taz. Say it that way. Go, try, tax, taz. Try, tax, taz. Say it again. Try, tax, taz. Try, tax, taz. Say it again. Excellent. We use these for severe gram-negative infections. Okay? Now, Meningitis 
and gonorrhea, we use ceph trioxone. So try. What do you use for meningitis and gonorrhea? Try. Which one? Try. try. Which one's best for pseudomonas? It's Taz. Which one's best for pseudomonas? Taz. But for meningitis and gonorrhea? Try. Which one's best for meningitis and gonorrhea? Try. And what about for pseudomonas? Taz. Taz. So let me ask you questions then. First generation, second generation, or third generation? So I'm going to name the sounds of the drugs, and you tell me if these sounds ring a bell. And when they do, you tell me if it's first generation, second generation, or third generation. Ready? Lynn and Lex. First generation. Fake Foxford. Second. Try Tax and Taz. What generation? Third. What about Fake Foxford? Second. What about Lynn and Lex? First. What about Taz? Third. What about Tax? Third. What about Fake? Second. What about Lynn? First. What about Fox? Second. Lynn and Lex? First. Try Taz Tax? Third. Fake Foxford? Second. Try Taz Tax? Third. Fake fox fur, Lynn and Lex. We did the first generation, second generation, third generation cephalosporins. Now we're going to do the fourth generation cephalosporins. There's only one fourth generation cephalosporin. Only one fourth generation cephalosporin. The name of that drug is cefepime. What's the name of the drug? Cefepime. Say it again. Cefepime is the only fourth generation cephalosporin we need to talk about. It's used for pseudomonas and other gram-positive organisms. Severe gram-positive organisms as well as pseudomonas. So in AIDS treatment, for AIDS treatment, we give three drugs. How many drugs? Three. How many drugs? Three. How many drugs? Three. three drugs. Two of those drugs must be NRTIs. Two of those drugs must be NRTIs. How many NRTIs? Two. two. But how many drugs total? Three. three. So we can give two NRTIs and one other drug. NRTI stands for Nucleoside Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitor. It competitively and reversibly inhibits nucleoside binding to reverse transcriptase. And remember that if it's competitively and reversibly inhibiting something, that means it's a competitive inhibitor. Competitive inhibitor. That means it messes with KM. KM goes up. KM goes? Up. Which means affinity then goes? Yeah. So competitive, in, inhib competitive inhibition is when KM goes up and affinity goes down and affinity is potency. So affinity and potency both go down while KM goes up. And competitive inhibition, it binds to the active site. What site does it bind to? Active. The active site, which means I can add more substrate to overcome the problem. Okay? So now when we look at this drug, these NRTIs, we should keep, in one, we should keep one thing in mind. All of these NRTIs need to be activated by thymidine kinase. They all need to be activated by thymidine kinase. They all need to be activated by thymidine, thymidine kinase. Side effect includes bone marrow suppression. That should make sense to you. And that bone marrow suppression can be re reversed with GCSF and EPO. And we talked in our immuno lecture about how grass stim means granulocyte stimulating. GCSF is granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Grass stim or gramo stim, which is granulocyte and macrophage stimulating factor. And we said grass stim G for grass stim G rhymes with B, B rhymes with three, works on IL3. This is a touching base, touching back on that since we've covered it already. So bone marrow suppression, which can be reversed with GCSF and EPO, okay, as well as peripheral neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, lactic acidosis, and megaloblastic anemia. I want you to keep reviewing those things, and when you're at home, I want you to repeat these out loud as you repeat them out loud here. So let's go over the side effects. Bone marrow suppression, say it. Bone marrow suppression, bone marrow suppression say it again. Bone marrow suppression. Lactic acidosis, say it. Lactic acidosis. Megaloblastic anemia, say it. Megaloblastic peripheral anemia. neuropathy, say it. And we can reverse that bone marrow suppression with GCSF and EPO. We can reverse it with GCSF. We can reverse it with GCSF and EPO. Excellent. All the NRTIs have the Dean Bean Seen sound. They all have the Dean Bean Seen sound. What sound? Dean Bean Seen. Dean Bean Seen. Say it again. Dean Bean Seen. Except for two, tenofovir and abacavir. Tenofovir and? Tenofovir and? Tenofovir and? Abacavir and? Tenofovir and? Abacavir and? Tenofovir and? Abacavir and? Tenofovir. Those two drugs don't have the Dean Bean Seen sound. They don't fit the pattern. The one that starts with the T does not need to be activated by the T. Tenofovir does not, does not need to be activated by thymidine kinase. Tenofovir, the drug that starts with the T, does not need the T to be activated. All the drugs have the Dean Bean Seen sound in the NRTI category. Remember, you'll give three drugs total, two of them will be NRTIs. They all have the Dean Bean Seen sound except for Tenofovir and Abacavir. Except for Tenofovir and Abacavir, and the one that starts with the T, Tenofovir does not need to be activated by thymidine kinase. It does not need to be phosphorylated. Which is the NRTI does, that does not need to be phosphorylated? Tenofovir. Which is the only NRTI that does not need thymidine kinase to be activated? Tenofovir. Tenofovir. Excellent. Then there's one we should know because this one is used as general prophylaxis. 
It's used also to decrease vertical transmission risk in pregnant women. And the name of that drug is Zidovudine. Zidovudine. Say it. Zidovudine. Go. Zidovudine. Say it again. Zidovudine. Say it one more time. Zidovudine. Okay, is the one that is used as general prophylaxis and to decrease vertical transmission list. Look, Dean, Bean, Cena, I've highlighted them for you. Zidovu, Dean. And then we have Didanosine. Say Didanosine. Didanosine. Say it. And Didanosine, they're dying of pain because they have pancreatitis and peripheral neuropathy. They don't really die of pain. I just remember it that way. Okay, Didanosine causes peripheral neuropathy. Okay, painful neuropathy, sorry, as well as pancreatitis. Didanosine. So there's three drugs there that you should know. There's one that does not need to be activated by thiamidine kinase. Which one is it? Tenofibine. There's one that's used as general prophylaxis and to decrease vertical transmission risk, and that one is? Tenofibine. There's one that can cause painful neuropathy as well as pancreatitis. The name of that drug is? Didanosine. Didanosine. Now, Zidovudine. Zidovudine used to be known as AZT. That drug can cause megaloblastic anemia. Which one on this list can cause megaloblastic anemia? Zidovudine. Which one? Zidovudine. Which one? Zidovudine. Excellent. So all the NRTIs have the dean bean seen sound. They competitively inhibit the nucleoside binding to reverse transcriptase. They all have the dean bean seen sound. They all need to be activated by thymidine kinase. They all have the dean bean seen sound except for tenofovir and abacavir. And the one that starts with the T does not need to be activated by T. Then we have protease inhibitors. Protease inhibitors, and you never tease a protease. Say you never tease a protease. You never tease a protease. Say it. You never tease a protease. All the protease inhibitors have the Navir sound. N-A-V-I-R. They inhibit the pole gene. P for protease. P for pole gene. P for prevents maturation. They inhibit protease. Side effects. Hyperglycemia. Say it. Hyperglycemia. GI intolerance. Say it. GI intolerance. Lipodystrophy. Say it. Lipodystrophy. So protease inhibitors will cause hyperglycemia, GI intolerance, and lipodystrophy. All the protease inhibitors have the Navir sound. What sound do they have? Navir. What sound do they all have? Navir. So I don't care about everything else. I just want to know the first letter. I don't care about the middle. There's one that can cause crystallization in your urine. There's one that can cause liver failure. Alphabetical order. Crystallization in your urine. And there's one that can cause liver failure. I comes before R. Crystallization comes before liver. So I, Navir, causes crystallization. R, Navir, causes liver failure. Which one causes crystallization in your urine? I, Navir. Which one causes crystallization in your urine? Which one causes liver failure? I, Navir. I, Navir. R, Navir. I'm done. I'm not worrying about all this different stuff. I'm not going to memorize every single drug. I know it ends in Navir. I know the one that starts with an I causes crystallization. The one that starts with an R causes liver failure. I gave you a gap between NRTI and NNRTI. So let me ask you a question. Let's say you give somebody a protease inhibitor. How many are you going to give them? How many protease inhibitors are you going to give them? One. But the other two drugs you're going to give them are going to be? NRTI. NRTI. The difference between NRTI and NNRTI is one N, right? And that N means non. So non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. How many NNRTIs are you going to give somebody? One. How many? One. One. And they work the same way. They just bind to a different site. That's all they do. They're non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Side effect profile is the same as NRTIs except NNRTIs are associated also with rashes. And NRTIs are also associated with rashes. Non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors do not need to be activated by thymidine kinase. So N for non, N for no, does not need to be activated by thymidine kinase. All the NRTIs do. So look at the NNRTIs. They all have veer in the middle. They have veer in the middle. They have veer in the middle. What do they have? Veer. Where's the veer? In the middle. They all have what? Veer. Say veer in the middle. They all have what? Veer in the middle. They all have veer in the middle. Not veer at the end. They all have veer in the middle. Where's the veer? In the middle. In the middle. Now let's review. All the NRTIs have what sound? Dean, bean, seen. What sound? Dean, bean, seen. Except for tenofovir and abacavir. Which two do not have the dean, bean, seen sound? Tenofovir and abacavir. Tenofovir and abacavir. Which one does not need to be activated by thymidine kinase? Tenofovir. And all the protease inhibitors have what sound? Navir. All the protease inhibitors have what sound? Navir. Navir. And there's two that we talked about. One can cause crystallization. That's I Navir. And the one causes liver failure is R Navir. Which one causes liver failure? R Navir. Which one causes crystallization? I Navir. Alphabetical order, right? I before R. Crystallization before liver. And all the NNRTIs have veer in the middle. All the NNRTIs have what? Veer in the middle, not at the end. And I'll be important when we get to this drug. Integrase inhibitor, raltegravir. Where's the veer here? It's at the end. You see it? Where's veer in the integrase inhibitor? 
At the end, where's the veer? Ah, don't confuse Rotegra veer with Tanofa veer or Abaca veer. That's why I made you say it ten times. Because Rotegra veer, Tanofa veer, and Abaca veer all have veer at the end. But Tanofa veer and Abaca veer are an RTIs. Rotegra veer is an integrase inhibitor. Integrase inhibitor, well, it inhibits HIV genome integration into the host cell. Side effect of this is hypercholesterolemia. What's the side effect of Rotegravir? Hypercholesterolemia. Excellent. Hypercholesterolemia. Those are your AIDS drugs. That's all you need to know, and that brings us to the end of our microbiology lecture.